right, guys, so this is the new Flywoo Explorer LR. The LR stands for long range, and this is a collaboration project between Flywoo and Dave CFPV. Um, this is a four inch long range micro quad, under 250 grams if you use a 6S450 LiPo. And uh, this is the um, video that, or the uh, battery I used in the video that you saw a couple of days ago, the little teaser video. Uh, if you're looking to do like long range cruising, you want some longer flight times, this battery will get you about nine to 10 minutes. If you use a 1000 milliamp hour 4S, the flywheel says that you can get 17 to 18 minutes. I haven't tested that yet because I don't have an exact like a 1050, I have like a 1300, but then I think at that point you're, you're exceeding like the point of diminishing returns and you're probably gonna get less flight time because you're carrying around extra weight. But this frame's been around for a while. I think this is not the exact same frame that uh, Dave C uh, designed, but he sent me one a long time ago like six months ago here it is it looks pretty similar it's also four inches and you guys never saw a video of this because this is one of these cursed builds because uh the flight controller in this uh i don't know fried the first time i tried to maiden it and i haven't had a had my chance to order a replacement yet so unfortunately i'm not even sure if i'm going to bother fixing that i'm going to probably just tear that down and uh turn it into something else i don't know we'll see if you guys have any suggestions let me know but this that's this frame here for Flywheel is based off of that frame and his design. But obviously here, this is designed for long range. It's got GPS rescue. It's got a 16 by 16 stack, which is what this frame is designed for. It's running the Vista system for DJI. Uh, it says Crossfire. And I have, it's got the new Flywoo Dave CFPV NIN 1404 V2s at 2750 KV. And you want a low KV for efficiency and so in 4s you're going to get a very long flight times on this setup uh, the frame itself is separated arms um, three millimeters thick uh, the plates are one and a half millimeters thick so if you break an arm you can replace those or individual arms the uh, frame is a staggered design so the uh, bottom sandwich plate here for the front arms is a little bit lower to allow space for the you know, bigger dji camera and then the back Part here, the back part of the bottom plate is higher up because you don't, you don't need as much space here for the Vista system. So space and weight is really maximized on this particular frame. A bunch of TPU parts here. Obviously you got a little protector for the camera and you got one here uh, for the GPS to hold the GPS. And then you have this little connector or this little TPU part for the antenna. This is a proprietary antenna. This is uh, Flywoo's new, I don't think what they're, these are called. I don't know if there's a name for these. Uh, yeah, there's, they're called <laughs> called Atomic. And it's a 20 centimeter extendable antenna here. So basically it keeps the uh, antenna away from the carbon, the frame, electronics, so you get the best reception for video and control. The stack in here is the Flywood stack. Uh, I've done a video on this a long time ago. The 16 by 16 stack, F4 flight controller, uh, 16 amp, uh, 4-in-1 EC, it's like 15 or 16 amps, and it's a, it's a BLES 16 by 16 stack here, and uh, that's what's on, it's on here, and the crossfire receiver is just on top of that. Bind button should be accessible from one of these holes over here, and if you're using it, if, if you wanted the other receiver versions, I put the receiver there as well, and the bind button should be fairly accessible. Props on here are the Gemfan Hurricane 4024s. Um, so I think you're going with this one for the best combination of power and efficiency. I think the HQ 4x2x2s are going to be pretty similar to these. So in terms of the uh, GPS rescue function, it's pretty much all set up. You will need to make a few adjustments in Betaflight regarding the, um, the aux channel that's going to trigger the GPS rescue function. So I believe it's on aux 3 currently, and I think it's set to... Uh, 2000 as the range for when it's actually going to be triggered. So your radio is going to be different. You're going to probably want to put it on a different aux channel. In my case, I switched to aux 4 and it's like on the high side, like 1900 is where it's set. So that basically when you flip the switch to uh, the, the top position to, to activate the GPS rescue function, uh, you want to also, you know, in, in, addition to, in addition to setting the mode in, in Betaflight, you want to go into the fail safe tab and 
actually set the channel value for when a failsafe occurs for that aux channel to trigger the GPS rescue function for you. So you can either do it by the switch, and then when the failsafe occurs, the channel will go to that set value that actually uh, triggers the GPS rescue function in the in the event of a failsafe. And then uh, one other thing is, um, I think they set the bar to five satellites before it will get a lock um, in terms of determining the home position. So you wanna make sure you don't take off because I think it is set to allow you to take off even if you don't have uh, five satellites. So just be aware of that. Um, if you take off and you don't have the home point set, then it it, it might just go fly away on you if, if the uh, GPS rescue function is triggered. So be aware of that. So make sure that you have a lock and then make sure that your home point arrow is working properly. That is pointing back to your home position. So you want to test that. Make sure that's working at closer proximity before you go further away, just make sure that you know the, the drone doesn't up where you don't expect it to. Now, if you do test the GPS rescue function within 100 meters, it will just drop to the ground as if it's like disarm, basically just, it just you're basically just disarming it as it's like a fail safe. Um, and that's because the sanity checks are turned off. If you want to test it, which I don't recommend you do, uh, within 100 meters, then you want to turn on the fail safe only option for the sanity check, and then that will disable that which will allow the GPS rescue function to occur within 100 meters. The reason they have that is because they don't expect a failsafe to occur within 100 meters for most receivers. And say, for example, you're only, you know, uh, a few feet away and then the failsafe occurs and then all of a sudden it will just shoot to the moon. It'll, it'll go to the set altitude, which I guess is 50 meters. And then you'll probably freak out because it'll go straight up and then it'll probably start landing right away. So. That's why they do that. So that's why they, they had the fail safes. Uh, basically, the sanity checks turned off for that in this in this particular case. Now, um, you know, if you're going to be doing long range, you're going to want to have a lost model alarm, and this one has that. And this has one of the ones with the built-in battery. I think it's called the Finder from Flywoo. It's very similar to the VFly Finder. Uh, it might even be based off the same one. It has an LED that will light up uh, if you're in a dark area, so that if it's at night. Uh, it'll start flashing, but you need to you need to disable this or disarm it uh, after you unplug the battery because if it'll, it basically it'll think that the, that you've crashed and it'll simulate basically that you've um, uh, you know it's lost and it'll start the beeping at uh, you know basically the alarm will go off because they'll think that the battery's been ejected. So let me just demonstrate that really quick and how you can uh, disable that once you've landed and you actually don't want the alarm to go off. So go turn it on. It's that bright light. And we'll go ahead and unplug it and it'll act like it's been crashed and the battery's been ejected and you see this little flashing light. It's mean, it means that the alarm is active and you need to disable it by pressing this button here for three seconds. But let me just, I think after 30 seconds it will beep and then it'll flash. And if it's dark outside, it'll, it'll you'll be able to see the flashing. It's pretty bright. So just wait till this, uh, Beeps, and then I'll go ahead and disarm it. But of course, you can disarm it beforehand. You don't have to wait. I just want to show you guys or listen to what it sounds like. There you go. Pretty loud. I think it beeps every five seconds, and then you want to press and hold this button for three seconds. And then the alarm will be disabled. So... If you don't do that, you just unplug and then let's like, say go back, put the car, the, the quad into you, the trunk of your car, then it'll also start beeping at you, and, and that's the reason why. All right, so here's the weight, and we're coming in at 163 and a half grams with the 654s that I flew in the other video. 240 grams. I think um, with a 754S, it was coming out like 255. So obviously you, you can go to much bigger batteries if you want and get much more flight time. This four inch can handle the weight, no problem. I just wanted to keep it under the 250 gram limit because I, I know a lot of you guys out there have regulations in your country or wherever and restrictions and you want to be able to fly without, fly legally without registering. And, the, and so that's why you're seeing all the uh, flights and, de and demos in, in the this particular configuration. 
Now, there is a mount. I don't know if it's going to be included for everybody, but they did send me the Insta360 Go mount. So you put that up here in the front, and then you can get some HD footage if you want. I mean, you know, it's not that much better than the DJI footage that's coming out of here at 50 megabits. So, you know, if you're if you're getting pretty good video here and you don't want to carry extra weight around, then this this video is more than adequate. Now, if you want to go a little bit more sophisticated and get like a naked GoPro, I'll probably do a video later on that. Um, not in this one, but it's gonna you're gonna have probably have to go to a smaller battery to go below 250 or yeah, the 250 gram limit. So probably like a 550, maybe even like a 450 for us, because the GoPro by you know even uh, by itself it's going to be like 30 grams so something to be aware of there are some extra parts in the box i want to show you see an extra spare arm here is just i think the front one i don't know if they're yeah i think it's just the front one maybe they're expecting that one to break in a crash not the back one no spare back arm was included and then you have these braces here i think they go between the the uh, front arm and the back arm to give it a little more uh, durability but uh, if you're not expecting to crash too much it's just extra weight i don't recommend putting them on it doesn't affect the flight characteristics in any in any, in any particular way okay so i'm gonna ramble on long enough about this you know if you're looking for a long range cruiser or just something for longer range not necessarily longer range flights or just longer flight times this is absolutely perfect for that at four inches uh, you, you can, you know, because of the four inch props, you get more efficiency. So you can get longer flights than on, let's say, a three inch. And you can get under that 250 gram limit, which is much harder to do on a five inch. So it's a nice, it's a nice compromise between, you know, longer flight times than a three inch and less weight uh, than a five inch. So, you know, there's not a whole lot more to say about this. It's, this is pretty much like my perfect sort of long range cruiser quad for you know this type of flying with especially with dji you know, i'm going to be probably flying all this in a lot of situations and because it has a gps rescue functions already baked in out of the box it's going to be perfect if you are wanting to test some areas that you're maybe a little sketchy you're not so sure about and as long as you know um you are in an area where like you're not flying under trees for example because then what happens is when the GPS rescue function kicks in, if you're under some trees, it'll, uh, when it kicks in, it'll, it'll try to climb to a set altitude in the GPS rescue settings, and it'll probably just go right into the trees. So this is for those kind of like areas where you're flying above stuff, like mountain surfing, that kind of thing. And then this is going to be perfect for that. If, you, if you're just looking for something out of the box that'll basically work and you just want to make a, you really just have to make a couple of settings, as I mentioned before, in your modes and your fail safe tab, it's gonna it's all baked in and ready to go and it's not a whole lot of work to do you can just go and fly just gotta get charge up your batteries and enjoy uh the flight without having to deal with all the configuration headaches of this particular type of setup for this kind of flying anyway uh here is my narrated flight for when i'm just kind of just want to get my impressions of how it feels in flight you guys already saw the long sort of longer flight that i flew uh, in the previous video. I'll link that down below in case you guys missed that, but that was a couple of days ago. That'll give you an idea of how it flies sort of on, in terms of like, you know, in a, in a wider area and, you know, what kind of video you're going to possibly get from this. So it's pretty good. I think a lot of people were pretty impressed by that video. So I'll link that down below and as well as a link to where you can pick this up. I think they're available at Banggood, Flywoo. It's probably going to be at Race Day Quads as well. So Links will be all down in the description. Anyway, overall, I like it. Flies great. I definitely recommend it if you're into this type of flying. That's going to do it for this video. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. All right, so I got a satellite lock, but the home arrow is kind of weird. I'm gonna land here and rearm. Home error is not pointing in the right direction, so I land first. So I do want to test out GPS rescue. All right. Hmm. I'm not 
not sure what is going on with this home arrow. Let me land again. Alright, so it looks like it's working. I'm, I'm seeing the distance. And let me go further away here. Yeah, okay, so that looks like the home air is working properly now. I only have eight satellites. Kind of expecting more satellites, but I don't see that. It's very windy right now. But um, before I do the GPS rescue test, um, wow, okay, so weird. The home air disappeared. And then the OSD elements kind of shifted around. That was really bizarre. I haven't seen that before. Uh, let me just fly around kind of acro a little bit. Just, uh, it's not really an acro machine, but... Let's see what it flies like. So, tune's all right. Especially given the kind of wind that we're seeing here. Pretty smooth. All right, let's see here. If we go off in this direction. All right, home arrow seems to be working. So, let's go over here. And we'll test it out. I'm going to test it on the switch. There we go. Let's turn around. It's going to climb. And bring us back. Alright. Uh, the altitude must be pretty high. I think it's like, I thought it was 50 meters, but it must be higher. We'll double check that later. Alright, so GPS rescue is working. And, yeah, it's really weird, like, the OSD elements kind of disappear for a second. I, I'm wondering if that has something to do with my SD card. I've heard, I think Tommy was having this problem. I might have to, um, well, I know your GPS rescue will work, but I may have to stitched here. There's some video files. Um, it's possible that the video recordings are going to be, be uh, broken up. I'll have to see when I look at the files at home. Yeah, there it again, just there. I can still see that it's recording, but the OSD elements are all shifted around. It's really bizarre. This is uh, probably nothing to do with the quad itself. It's probably some sort of a firmware bug. Well, I already have four minutes of flight time, and I have a 654S on here, under 250 grams. And I am running 50 megabit mode. Uh, about 400 meters away here. And still at 50 megabits. It's super windy and I'm not sure if you hear that in the microphone or not, but I put the, uh, the mic on the inside of my shirt so hopefully the wind will be buffeted a little bit. But we're getting a really nice, clean, high bitrate image. And I'm running Crossfire, so, I mean, I'm a 99% RSSI. Yeah, I can see a little bit of jello and shaking in the video. Which is a tiny bit. Yeah, I'm at uh, 50 megabits still. Go ahead and turn around here. This is about 900 meters away. There's nothing special. I've done this test on analog with uh, my Larva X. 
like a while back. But of course that was analog and I was getting terrible video breakup over here. But on DJI it's perfectly crystal clear. Alright. So I think I was fighting a lot of wind, so I was uh, my voltage is starting to drop. I'm gonna head back. I think I got up to a 10 minute flight, just kind of cruising low to the ground earlier on this. It's stable at 14.7 right now, so I'll just kind of cruise around here. If I need to dart back, I can. Uh, but if you're willing to put a bigger battery on here, a thousand milliamp hour, um, wow, it's really, oh my god, it's super windy. So this thing must be fighting a ton of wind. I think that's why the battery voltage is lower than I was expecting. Yeah, it's, it has to be fighting a ton of wind. But it's remarkably, it was flying remarkably smooth given these windy conditions. And I'm really, I'm really, I'm actually pleasantly surprised at how well and smooth this tune is. Really nice. All right, so that, that OSD glitching wasn't happening or when I was further away. It, it seemed to only happen when I was like, got back closer to the home point. So maybe uh, it has something to do with coming closer to the home point where it just starts glitching out on you. Uh, I see some shaking now from the wind. It's pretty, pretty strong. I'm at 14.5 volts now, so I'm gonna make a little swing around this way. Oh, I'm going downwind now. It's it really it's really picking up speed here. This is downwind. All right, I'm actually pulling back to slow it down. Uh, coming this way. So yeah, this is, uh, you're gonna be able to cover a large area with a pretty nice flight time with not a very big battery and under 250 grams. So kudos to Flywo. This is a really nice, this is right up my alley. I, I, I like this kind of micro. 14.2, so when it's 14, I'll go ahead and land. So it's probably gonna be a little bit less than 10 minutes and I, definitely is due to all of this really bad wind. All right, here we go, 14 volts, let's go ahead and land it. So yeah, awesome, awesome little craft. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'll try and post some more flight footage like on Instagram or on Facebook. So check it out, follow me on those and you'll see some more flight footage. Talk to you later.